there are two states of mind that I think can vastly improve all of our well-being, and that's the ability to be alert and calm during the day and the ability to be asleep at night for long periods of time. And there are a number of things to do for sleep, including the light viewing. I'm a big believer in yoga nidra, which is a free practice um, that it's it's a 30 minute script that you listen to. It falls under the category of non-sleep deep rest or NSDR. It gets you better at falling asleep. You do this during wakefulness or if you wake up in the middle of the night. Another great resource, also zero cost, is Reverie, R-E-V-E-R-I.com. It's an app that was established by my colleague and the Associate Chair of Psychology at Stanford, which is um, a, a self-hypnosis app to get better at sleeping, to manage anxiety, focus, et cetera. Again, free for Apple and Android, zero cost. Um, but for people who have trouble falling and staying asleep, many people benefit from taking magnesium threonate, um, yeah. T-H-R-E-O-N-A-T, or bisglycinate, one or the other. And there's also evidence that uh, magnesium threonate can offset some symptoms of cognitive decline. There are good data on that starting to surface. Um, and then the other thing is apigenin, A-P-I-G-E-N-I-N, 50 milligrams of apigenin, which is chamomile extract, is um, can help a lot of people fall and stay asleep. Those two supplements, you know, have really helped me with sleep. They're non-addictive. Some people, about 5% of people, experience gastric discomfort with magnesium but that's very rare. Most people report that their sleep is just fantastic. Uh, I don't monitor my sleep with whoops and auras and things like that. I'm not against it. I just go by the subjective feeling. But for people that do monitor their sleep, they tend to get a lot more deep sleep. Um, I just like to use subjective measures, like I feel really rested or something like that. And um, I've talked about this. We have a newsletter uh, on hubermanlab.com that lists out some of the dosages and yeah. this kind of thing if people yeah. want to look at it. It's very easy to find, zero cost. You don't have to sign up. Uh, you just you can just grab it there. Um, I do think supplements are, are powerful that way. And, and br But Brian was teasing me because when we traveled together to give some talks, I was constantly getting stopped at security because I had a duffel full of what essentially looked like a pharmacy. I take a lot of stuff. I do. I take a multivitamin. I take ginger. I take garlic. The allicin in ginger, uh, excuse me, in garlic, A-L-L-I-C-I-N. I mean, if you look at the data on allicin, I mean, in terms of cardiovascular health, it's quite impressive. I take one to three grams of EPA essential fatty acids per day because I don't eat fatty fish. I don't like the taste of fish. And in double-blind placebo-controlled studies, yeah. one to two grams of EPA per day stands up against SSRIs, things like Prozac and Zoloft, without the side effect profile. And for people that do need to take those drugs, it lowers the, the total dosages that they need to take in order to have an a, a effective antidepressant effect. So it essentially lowers the side effect profile. So to say, I think a few years ago, the idea of supplements was like, ooh, can't you get everything from what you eat? It's like, prop, maybe, but I personally derive tremendous benefit from vitamin D3, from I, for my gut microbiome, I don't take probiotics. I, I, what I do is I eat one to four servings of fermented foods per day because there's evidence from Justin Sonnenberg's lab, which is yeah. upstairs from my lab at Stanford, that it can improve uh, the, the, the pathways that are related to inflammation. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that one can do and take. I like to focus on the do and then focus on the take. And then I do think people should be scientists about this. I think that you don't want to start taking 50 things at once and wonder what, you know, it's a big expense and then you're wondering what works and what doesn't. You know, if one wants to experiment, introduce things one at a time, talk to your physician, obviously, make sure these things are safe for you. But that's why Brian was uh, making that joke because um, he, you know, he was like, what, what supplements do you take? People always ask me and I just say all of them because otherwise I could, I could do a three hour podcast on everything that I take and it would put everyone to sleep. It would cure insomnia. <laughs> Well, I've got plenty. Thank you for answering it, first of all. I've got plenty more to follow up on that. But just to finish off, a lot of people in the world right now are struggling. A lot of people can't see a way out. The way the world has changed, it's making them feel fearful, anxious. A lot of people have tried to go and see their doctors, yet feel very frustrated with some of the solutions that are on offer. And with your wealth of knowledge about the brain and the body and the minds, I wonder for people who are wanting some practical help, you've, you've mentioned some, some great tips already in the show so far, but just to finish off, the, the podcast is called Feel Better, Live More. When we feel better in ourselves, we get more out of life. 
Could you maybe share some of your sort of final words and thoughts with my audience? Sure. Um, well, certainly there is a lot of challenge in the world right now. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, and I think that the thing to remember is that ultimately, if we start in close with our nervous system and start thinking about adding one practice, um, some morning light viewing, um, dimming the lights in the evening, simple things, um, having that physiological sigh, you can practice it once or twice, but it's ready to go because it was installed in you uh, with all everything you need. Um, you know, realizing that you have control over your response system uh, and your nervous system. I think that's a, that's a start. I, I think uh, without getting into the science of it, I am a, a believer in, in doing a little bit of journaling each day. Um, some, it's amazing how our anxieties and stresses when placed onto paper can actually um, expunge some of those anxieties and stresses. It's sort of obvious, but um, even if your handwriting is as poor as mine, even if you're not writing in complete sentences, even if you tear up the sheet of paper afterward, or even if it's just a walk where you're thinking about this stuff, that can be very powerful. You know, I, I'm not, you, I usually don't come to things from kind of the tough love stance, but it, so I don't want this to sound like that, but the truth is that there is no um, magic stork or fairy or pill or anything that's going to be handed to us or deployed that's going to take care of our challenges. We, we are, we are all responsible for our immediate well-being. And what I can promise, however, is that these tools and practices, they work and they lead to places where we have a more optimal stance to deal with the, the challenges of the world. Our, our species is remarkable. We, we've come through far worse than what we're dealing with now, believe it or not. Um, I mean, the number of deaths from childbirth alone, mother and infant, uh, you know, over time has gone down. I'm not saying the world is much better than it used to be. I can recall a not too distant past when things felt far simpler, frankly. Um, and I think others can too. But I think that as bleak as things appear, we, we are here. We have the, this incredible system, uh, our nervous system, that uh, was arranged to adapt. And we are, right now, we are building resilience. It's, it's uncomfortable, but because it's uncomfortable, it means that our, our species is actually getting stronger right now, not weaker, because we are a little bit back on our heels. And so we're just trying to get to flat-footed stance, as we talked about earlier. And um, the discomfort of that is, is uncomfortable. Uh, it's a circular statement, I realize, but it's uncomfortable. But we're getting stronger. And I, I'm an optimist. I do believe that we will reap the benefits of all this hard work and strain and um, meanwhile, we should try and reinforce ourselves from the inside out. And hopefully today's discussion provided a, a, a few tools and um, some mechanisms behind those tools that will allow people to do that uh, with zero cost and with a, just a little bit of time and effort. Yeah, Andrew, thank you so much for that. Thank you for everything you've shared during the conversation today. Thank you for everything you do to share freely um, such wonderful information with hundreds of thousands, probably millions of people across the globe now. You are having an impact in such a profound way. And as I said right at the start, it isn't just the information you share, it's the way you share it. I think you are one of the best followers on Instagram out there for people. I'd highly encourage they, they follow you, they check out your podcast because it's full of practical tips. But it's it's done in a very kind, gentle, and non-judgmental way, which I deeply, deeply resonate with. Is there anywhere else you would like to point people, Andrew, um, apart from what I've just mentioned? Uh, well, thanks. No, we're Huberman Lab on Instagram, Huberman Lab on Twitter, Huberman Lab podcast. And then, of course, there's the Huberman Lab at Stanford, which right now is not open to studies, but eventually uh, we uh, will start recruiting again. Um, those are the places to, to find us. And um, so I, I just really want to extend my thanks. I, I've been a consumer of your content for a long time now. And I, I love the, the, the approach that you take. Again, non-judgmental, give, 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 give. I, I can feel that. I can see it. Uh, I, I know other people feel and see it. And um, I feel very much a, a um, partner in arms with you in this. And I, I look forward to being able to meet face to face and 
Uh, should I be so lucky to come back for a part two or a part three on here, I'd be, I'd be honored and delighted. If you enjoyed that clip, here's another powerful clip that I think you are really going to enjoy. Just one dose of caffeine in the evening decreased the amount of deep sleep by 20%. You would have to normally age by about 15 years to produce that type of a deficit in your deep sleep, or you can do it every single night by having a cup of coffee.